Well, hello and welcome back. Uh, so I'm just going to show off a quick demo on how to do a pipeline, bringing something from a 3D program like Inventor or Maya or SolidWorks or whatever uh, into Revit. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, you may have uh, some special components you want, like maybe a special desk or shelving or something like that. You can model it up in a program like that and import it over. That way you're kind of allocating your time best. Oftentimes it's easier to model in a, a dedicated platform rather than in Revit itself. So uh, I'm going to use Inventor to show this off, but essentially the same process applies. If you can export whatever as an RFA, uh, which is a family file, you can import that into Revit. So uh, with something like this, you know, you have an assembly in my case, and uh, I'm going to turn all the planes on. And basically, when you're looking at this, um, you want the planes to be like they are here, where the crosshair essentially is the middle. Because when you're looking at a floor plan, you know, it's going to be based on the center of that component. So those planes are good. But my planes here, not so much. So uh, naturally, if you're working with a ceiling component, like a lot that you're making custom, you would want this plane here, uh, in this case the XZ, to be on the top face. You know, that way it's touching essentially the ceiling. Um, but you would also need an offset too. So in this case, I want it to be brought in with the bottom on the top of the first floor. So what I need to do, <clears throat> flip my thingy here, is make this plane like this. So now when we bring it in, you know, this will be touching the first floor. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you don't have it on center, what'll happen is it'll bring it out with a, an offset, you know? So if we were in a top view and you didn't have the crosshair on center, your mouse would be here, but the component would be way over here, which is uh, clunky to say the least. So keep that in mind. But um, so, you know, there's a couple of different things you could do here to make the same process easier, but you need to essentially shrink wrap the part or simplify it. Um, you know, you can do that through going to the BIM content and clicking export and it'll prompt you to do it. But I don't suggest this because um, what happens is it substitutes it in your assembly, which if you don't want would be problematic. So what we're going to do is on the assemble tab, click simplify. Um, and then from there, you know, you can choose your different options, but I'm just going to do this uh, first one, merge out any, you know, seams between planar faces. And I'm going to choose just a random location here. And the name you give it will be the name that it shows up as in Revit. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to say super cool desk because it's super cool right <laughs> uh, fun fact about this desk while this is loading uh, I had to model this up for our, our drafting labs on campus and uh, this is kind of one of the layouts I was going with so you know if you don't have a 3d mouse that you're working with and drafting you should get one look into it 3d connection not sponsored okay so uh, now that you've got this as a single part you need to go ahead and export it now you may ask hey you could have done it with an assembly right yeah you could but you're trying to reduce memory so i would highly suggest doing the simplify so now that we've done that we'll go back to the environments panel and we're going to hit bim content again but this time we're going to go ahead and hit export building components it says do you want to save yes i do um that's i don't want to save that okay so basically we have super cool desk RFA now. So I'm just going to hit save in my designated location that I choose. And in your case, you would want to be saving these where you plan to, um, you know, store all of your family files. So wherever the main area that you have your entire library, you would ideally save these here if you plan on reusing them. But, you know, it does take a, a bit of a minute here, depending on how big the part is. You know, it may take a little longer. And then it asks for this. Do you want a translation report? No, there's no point. You know, it's just, it's useless. It's, I, I can't imagine a purpose for it. So, so now that we've done that, you know, you could just close Inventor completely because we're done here. And essentially you hit component in Revit. And then you have in the modify place area, you can do a load family. And what we're going to do is just navigate to that. And here is super cool desk. And here we are. You know, just like that. Now, um, you know, as far as how it looks, it's pretty much exactly as you saw it. 
if I were to go and put it on realistic, I don't know that it would have like the wood grain. Uh, it even has that. Yeah, check that out. That's freaking sick. So, you know, there's a lot of synergy using the two together, I feel like. Um, but like I said, the one downside is, yeah, it, the name does come in as, you know, whatever you put it as. And I haven't played with it a lot, but I'm pretty sure you can still edit a lot of these values. You just may have to uh, do something like in Revit to modify, you know, rather than in Inventor. But uh, that's it. You know, basically export whatever to an RFA and you can load it in. Um, but that's going to be it. Thanks for watching.